Hi, everyone. So in this recording, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the most common block that I hear from most people that they're having, and that is fear. Fear is the most, I would say, the number one block for people that are ready to go, they want to do it, but then there's that this, this fear, you know, what if this, what if that? And there are usually a couple of fears that are common across uh, most people that want to do this stuff. So I'm going to go through uh, some of these fears and try to shed some light on them and help you see things from a new perspective. Number one, what if I won't be able to return back to my body? Where is this person that never came back to their body that has spread this false rumor? This is one of those fears that many beginners have because they don't understand how this stuff really works. So what if I get stuck somewhere and I'm not able to return back to my body? Well, actually, the problem is not that you cannot return back to your body. The problem is that you return to your body too quickly. And that is something that you will understand as soon as you start practicing these things. Usually you get sucked back to your body much quicker than you want. And actually staying out is what you're trying to do more than staying in. So it's, that's one of the fears that you know beginners have, of course, because it's something that they don't know what it is and they have this common fear. Um, however, the thing is like this, when you are out uh, exploring, uh, your, your emotions that you have in the exploration are, is, is connected, is transferred to your physical body. So if you were to f if you were to have an experience where um, you know suddenly something either excites you a lot or scares you a lot, um, it doesn't matter. Whatever like experience you would have that would create a very strong uh, emotional peak, then that emotional peak will be transferred back to your physical body, and your physical body will start changing its breathing pattern and also heart rate. You know, so it will go from being in the steady, you know, sleeping mode where the body is just asleep. It will go to being um, your heart starts being really fast and your breathing starts going faster. And as soon as that happens, your body is basically waking up. And as soon as your body is waking up, you get sucked back instantly and you're back in half a second. So, you know, the moment you feel fear or you're, you know, super excited about something, hope, now you're back to your body. So to actually return, you know, if you ever like, if you ever were like scared, oh no, I need to return back to my body. Yeah, you will <laughs> return instantly back to your body. So that's never actually a problem ever, never. It's never a problem that I've had. And it's never a problem that any of, my, of the people that explore that have explored for, you know, many, many years have had that problem. You can return instantly to your body. Uh, and you don't need to be scared or to have high emotions to return. You just, just the thinking, just the thought of returning to your body will take you back to your body. And that's why, you know, sometimes it's actually a bit of, um, uh, it's a bit annoying because you just the thought of your body sometimes can bring you back. Just the thought of your bed or your room or the fact that you're, you know, your body's laying in the room as projecting, just those thoughts can quickly bring you back. Uh, and so really the challenge for most of us is not that how to get back quicker, is, is how, to, how can we stay out? Well, how can we get out first of all? And then how can we stay out longer? And then how can we stay out longer and also have a very high level of awareness in the exploration and also have a very high uh, level of memory when we come back because a lot of times what happens is if you stay out long uh, you're um, you might uh, lose slowly start losing your level of awareness and you fall into a kind of a dreamy state and then a sleep and when you do that a lot of your memory gets wiped out and so you forget a lot of the experience. So that's why it's actually better to have short, intense experiences rather than very long ones, which you then don't remember much of. And one last thing, which is crucial to understand, is that we actually astral project every night when we are sleeping. 
So every night when we go to sleep, our energy body is detaching from our physical body and we are out around having experiences. Uh, now, they can be dream experiences, which are also a form of projection, but they're a projection in the mental plane where we imagine things, where we play out our own little simulated worlds. Or it can also be uh, projections into uh, the astral or other realms. But the problem is that we don't remember them. And we are not conscious. We're like an autopilot. Uh, so we don't really remember these very well, unfortunately. That's why they're not conscious. They're just kind of happening. But what's important is that they're actually happening automatically. You know, this is something that the body does. It's natural. It's, it's as natural as going to sleep, obviously, because it's happening in our sleep. So you shouldn't be afraid of something that's happening um, naturally when you sleep. Because then you can, you know, if you're afraid of, of that, then you should also be afraid of going to sleep. And of course, you're not afraid of going to sleep, right? Now, number two, what if something or someone takes over my body while I'm away? Again, a false rumor, since if this was the case, you would have already been possessed by someone in your sleep by now, right? Also, we don't actually leave our bodies in the way that people think. We just project our awareness out and away from it. And we are always present in our physical bodies as well. We're always at least in two places at the same time. And it is definitely possible to have multiple projections in different realities at the same time as well. But it's more common that you are aware of your projection and your physical body at the same time. You always know how to return and you always feel your physical body if you want to. And lastly, the fear of something bad happening to you while you explore. So. When it comes to exploring, is, the, is there a danger in astral projection? Can you, you know, get hurt? Is it safe? You know, are you getting yourself into trouble by doing this practice? Are you opening the door to something that you cannot close and it's going to be a, a hell for you, you know? Because this is, this, this is the kind of thoughts that people hold. Um, and I don't blame them. There's a lot of crappy, misinformative information online. Um, from uh, from different uh, sources that you know will tell you that there are demons there and there are all kinds of scary things that will attack you and all of that stuff. Um, so you know this needs to be addressed properly so that people know what they're going to get themselves into. Now, first of all, you cannot get hurt when you are out of body. You cannot, nothing can hurt you. You know, you might see something strange. You might see something that looks like a shadow figure or, you know, some weird creature or, you know, which again, you know, you might see something strange, but it comes down to your own interpretation, what that is. And usually that's what scares us the most is our own filters that we put on the things that we see. And based on our belief systems and backgrounds, you know, we would project our own understanding of what we see and um, scare ourselves uh, if we see something that we think looks like something from a movie, for example. You know, if we see something that looks like this ghostly figure and we are obsessed with watching horror movies, we're going to, you know, we're going to pretty much get really scared and think, oh, this is obviously, you know, what I've seen in that movie. This is a ghost that's going to, you know, possess me or something. Um, but it's not like that. It, it Just because you have an idea of what that is, it doesn't mean that it is that thing. You know, it can be all kinds of things. So uh, first, first thing you need to do is to be open minded to that. You have no idea what is out there. And you shouldn't judge it based on, you know, what you've seen in movies or you've read somewhere. Just try to be very open minded and be curious and positively curious. Don't put a label on things straight away. Uh, this is what separates people that, uh, you know, succeed with this practice and people that fail. Because if you if you see a, a dark looking figure and then you think, oh, that's a demon, it's dangerous, it's going to attack me. And then you you know, you wake up from your experience and, and, and you, you 
you tell yourself that that was a demon and then um, you know the devil's after you and whatnot then of course you know that's going to be a very a negative experience for you you're going to stample that as a negative experience you're going to scare yourself to not even continue with the practice but if you're instead are curious thinking okay this looks like some sort of um you know shadow looking figure but what is it is it really what i you know believe it is like how do i know what this is and you actually go and have a conversation with it instead of being scared or you might just just accept that you don't know and just don't put a label on it you know and um a lot of times these figures might be other explorers that are exploring um and they're actually nice people it can be your you know you can be your neighbor sleepwalking or i mean sleepwalking in their energy body being having a dream it can be all kinds of things and so you know don't put a negative label on things so that's the first thing i would say don't put negative labels on things that you see just because they're strange looking to you because of course you're entering a new world where things are not like in the physical so of course you're going to see strange things and so of course some things might be you know looking a bit scary to you but that doesn't mean it's scary that's just your own perception of what you're seeing and so you need to be much more open-minded when you're projecting and to to feel like you have to be more like a kid in a candy store where you just kind of explore things with excitement and um uh, with with uh, with a positive attitude and also an open-mindedness and an humbleness that you don't really know what these things are and you're going to find out uh, a bit like a scientist in the lab you're going to experiment you're going to see what, what what is this thing and so the other point is like i said before that nothing can really hurt you so you know if you were to encounter some um a person that is uh, very intense or or you find scary or something they cannot hurt you like you're not you cannot get hurt nothing can happen to you so because of that you know you can say that astral projection is actually much more safe than physical life and that's something that not many people think about physical life you know we're born in this physical body and we are pretty fragile we're in this meat body right and pretty much uh, any hit can hurt us we can go on the street we can hit by a car uh, we can go to the wrong neighborhood and have problems there with the people there um, you know there's a lot of violence going on and we learn how to stay safe as physical humans by just knowing to not go to certain places by not hanging out with certain people or by not going out at certain times um, but we're still always vulnerable and we are always at risk to get hurt uh, when we're traveling, you know, train crashes or plane crashes or car crashes. There, there are so many ways that you can get hurt physically. But when you're exploring non-physically, you don't get hurt at all. Like nothing can really, you know, you can go through walls. Uh, a car can drive over you and it goes through you. So there's there's no way to actually hurt you. And when you know that when you know that hey nothing can hurt me no one can hurt me no one can like punch me in the face or or like uh, you know stab me with an energy sword or whatever uh, when you know that that's not possible that you're you're not gonna have any problems then you know even if you were to see something that to you you know to your belief system or to your eyes that looks disturbing you know might have been i don't know uh, uh, octopus with big arms whatever something that's scary to you um, then you won't get scared when you know that hey this thing cannot hurt me so i'm all powerful in this state i can fly you know i can jump really high i can teleport i can return back to my body so i don't have to be scared of anything because nothing can hurt me so actually you're more you should be more scared when you're out on the streets physically because then you actually are in, in a very fragile state you can you know something can hurt you physically but when you're ass projecting nothing can hurt you so it's very big very important thing to remember that let's see if i covered everything here um yeah so there's one more thing so so with these with all of these stories with demons and all kinds of scary thing that people see um 
I've researched this for for a long time now, and I've been talking to people that have seen these things, and I've um, I've explored myself for a very long time. And the thing is, these these negative things that people report, um, they're not necessarily even real. Most of the time, they're just based on their own fears that are manifesting in in some shape or form. Usually when people are in sleep paralysis and this is when people are uh, you know people are doing the practice uh, or they might just suddenly wake up from from sleep and they are in sleep paralysis sleep paralysis is when your whole body is paralyzed and you cannot move uh, but you are aware your mind is basically awake and you can also uh, see through the eyelid through eyelids sometimes you can see the room your room now when people get into this state uh, spontaneously without actually trying to out ask project and, and especially with, without even knowing what as projection is when people get into this state suddenly it's a pretty scary state because they don't know why they're there they, they don't know what's happening to them they don't know why they're suddenly they don't know why they're paralyzed you know they they might not have experienced that before or they have and they just don't know what's happening and they don't know why this is happening and that combination of not knowing why it's happening and the feeling of being stuck and also the feeling of not being able to breathe properly because uh, you, you feel like your body is very heavy, that those combinations create a fear that, hey, something is holding me, uh, something is pushing on my chest. And those, those, you know, those thoughts uh, in that state of consciousness straight away creates you know visual aspects of uh, of that fear so you so you know so people can start seeing like a you know a dark uh, energy like pushing against their chest or uh, big spiders in the room or all kinds of scary things uh, that they themselves uh, imagine and manifest because of their fear because they need a rational explanation to why they're stuck, why they're not, not able to move their body, well, you know, what's holding them. They, they think something is holding them, so they create this, this whole scenario. This is the most common reason why people report seeing demons and all kinds of crazy shit, right? But when you understand that, hey, this is natural, like my body goes into sleep, sleep paralysis because I'm not supposed to act out my dreams. That's why it's in sleep paralysis. This is normal, this is natural, and if I just wait a little bit more, or if I just wiggle my toes, or if I break my breathing pattern uh, to breathe a little bit differently, I will wake up from this uh, paralysis instantly. I don't have, this is nothing to fear. This is the first thing. Like, if you understand that this is not something to fear, this paralysis state, um, then you will, you know, you're, you won't have to go so far and create all of these creatures that are attacking you. And so uh, this is actually something that I've seen a lot with people that have had in the beginning, they had these, um, you know, they saw these creatures in the room attacking them, all kinds of crazy shit because they're afraid of this feeling. And then once they read about it, once they understood that, oh, this is natural, uh, you know, this is, it, it, well, it's natural that it happens to a lot of people. It doesn't happen to any, everyone, but it's, it's, a, it's a normal you know, it's a state that your physical body puts you in and it happens sometimes and it's nothing to scare, be scared of. When people understand that, even people that had, have had negative experiences in the past uh, with sleep paralysis, when they understand that it's actually nothing to fear and it's natural, suddenly they just don't see all of these scary things anymore. They're gone and they're just seeing their own room peacefully and they just feel that feeling that they're stuck, but there's no scary entities in the room. There's nothing. And that's because they don't project their fears anymore. Uh, and also, sleep paralysis is something that not everyone gets. Uh, I don't get sleep paralysis. I don't have to be in sleep paralysis to be able to project. Uh, it's enough to just have your body to fall asleep. It doesn't have to be per, per, uh, paralyzed. So it's, it's a personal thing. You know, Some people get into that state quickly. Some people don't. But it doesn't matter if you understand that it's safe and also if you understand what techniques you can use to get out of that state if you wanted to then being in that state is very comfortable and that is something that i it's important to understand about fear 
usually f- we fear things that are unknown that we don't understand but once you understand the things that are taking place once you understand the you know the process of getting out of body the experiences you know the fear just fades away automatically and so once you start practicing astral projection and you've had your first uh, non-physical experience maybe it is that you can see through your uh, eyelids or see through your mask that you have on your uh, eyes you know um, that maybe is your first experience then maybe you have an experience where your energy arm is out of place with your physical arm that's also like an experience like oh that was new or maybe you're floating out of your body and then whoop, you're sucked back again and or you know maybe you were able to leave your body or you got vibrations or whatever when you take these baby steps and you do it constantly like every now and again every day every uh, a regular practice when you're doing a regular practice and you have these experiences regularly you slowly slowly start getting very used to these sensations and they're not foreign anymore they become something that you're very used to it and therefore your fear slowly fades away or if not they can the fear can just go away instantly uh, some of you have read robert Monroe's book he talks about you know he was one of the you know he was one of those people that have actually documented his life's experiences going from uh the point where he had natural um, spontaneous out-of-body experiences where he was not able to um, like he didn't even know what that was and and for him it must have been way scarier uh in the 70s at his time than for for us today you know we if we have an, uh, something that like, like that happens to us today like we are floating out of our body we go to google and we google it and bam we'll get like tons of information about what this is but it, it, back then in the 70s when robert monroe started you know he had to figure everything out himself and you know he was terrified in the beginning because no one knew what that was there was no one that was talking about it and here he is you know seeing himself lying in bed from another perspective being out of body uh, floating out of body and not knowing what's going on and obviously thinking negative thoughts like oh he's dying or he's sick or he's mentally distorted or whatever um and that's where the fears came in the fear of oh this is not normal this is wrong or what if something's going to happen like it's almost your your own thoughts scare you more than the actual experience your own projections of what's going on your own beliefs scare you so that's why um the first thing you really should do uh, to deal with fear is to write down on a piece of paper or in your phone or whatever write down all the fears that you have and just get really deep with yourself to figure out what, what kind of fears do i have around this subject you know what am i afraid of and it's important to sit with this for you know a good half an hour an hour to really go deep with the fears because <clears throat> you will probably know some of the fears already you can just say yeah i'm afraid of this but if you sit with it for, for like an hour, you will be able to pick up a couple more fears that were, you know, lingering in there in the background and maybe in a bit in the subconscious mind or so that it wasn't that you weren't really aware of before. But those are really important because you might be aware that you have a, a block um, <clears throat> with, um, you know, maybe returning back to your body and then you think that's it. But maybe there is more. And if you don't address those fears uh, subconsciously, they can be blocking you from actually going out because, you know, your mind is trying to to keep you safe. It's trying to make sure that you survive and thrive in the best way possible. So if you have some subconscious blocks there that, uh, you know, know, some thoughts, some negative thoughts about astral projection or some fears, then those will pretty much hold you back from actually getting out or to stay out longer or to really succeed because they're trying to keep you safe they're they're there for a good reason but you need to be in control of your emotions you need to be the master of your or own um, self so it's important that you write these down you write down all the fears you have all the negative belief systems that you have on uh, somewhere that you can see them and you need to start reflecting on those and start realizing you know how much of those are just you know based on some 
disinformed stuff like where did you get those belief systems for uh, from and how do you know that they're even true you know can you be sure just try to really question those and work with those fears and um, then really two things have has helped me to overcome any fears that i've had or i know other people as well um, use some of these uh, there's some different solutions to deal with fear of course you can go to do hypnosis and different things like that but the really the simplest thing you can do is number one you need to just get more informed uh, of these uh, the you know what to expect when you're exploring uh, being familiar with what can happen being familiar with uh, the astral you know being familiar with these different states will make you less fearful because then you know what to expect and then it's different it's fine so what i recommend is to stay away from all of these negative inspired you know videos on youtube that talks about all kinds of fear scary stuff it's just completely stay away from those negative stuff because they don't help you at all and they're and also people that write them are just very scared and they like to make it sound even more scary and warn other people and they think they're doing people a service by doing that so just stay away from that stuff that's not going to help you uh, and instead just read you know some of these big explorers books like robin moreau's books um or jurgen uh zates just read Go go online, find some some books that have good ratings, or ask in the groups what uh, books to read. I also have a list of books if you're interested to that I can recommend to you. And just start reading. It's important to just read like books with positive experiences of other people's uh, other explorers' experiences. Uh, just to understand, like just to start getting a an idea of what to expect out there. You know, what what can you ex- expect to what kind of experiences are normal in these realms you know sometimes people talk about hands sticking out in mid-air um and and that can be really scary for some people but you know if you read uh, books on this stuff um uh, you know people report seeing hands reaching out to them and and i've also had these experiences too you know suddenly there's a hand reaching out to you and it's like an invitation it's not a scary thing. We might look at it as a scary thing, but it's, it's actually an invitation. And you're supposed to grab the hand and the hand will pull you and take you somewhere where you're supposed to go and teach you something. And usually that's like typical way of, for, for our guides to interact with us. Um, and this, it's important to get familiar with these, you know, with this, with this environment, with these concepts that, oh, there can be a hand that can just reach out to you. And that's a positive thing. Um, it's quite symbolic too, a hand, you know, a hand reaching out to you. Uh, so that's number one, like just read up on it. So get familiar with, with, with it, inform yourself similar to how you would do when you go, if you know, if you go on vacation somewhere, you know, you want to read up on the location you're going to go to, to know what to expect. And when you do, you feel much more comfortable going there because you know, you've read about it. You know where the hotel is, you know, where the, I know where the hospital is or whatever you just you know what to expect and that makes you feel comfortable it's not unknown anymore so that's number one and uh, number two really it is the you know you can still read as much books as you as you want but really you will never really get rid of your fear or your emotions fully until you just start practicing it so just by just doing it you know just take the steps and actually start doing the practice and and learn how to get out of body and start having these sensations and get familiar with these states and then you realize huh that wasn't so scary you know first time you get the vibrations sometimes people get quite surprised because they can be extremely strong Uh, now vibrations are something that comes to you uh, when you uh, do this practice you suddenly feel this overwhelmingly uh, vibrational feeling all over your body feel like electricity somehow and uh, this is one of the key moments that you want to get to to be able to uh, then exit the body uh, to start exploring and when this first happens to people you know it can, it can be scary especially if you don't know it's going to happen and again if you know it's going to happen if you read about it if you have understood what it is 
then that's not scary anymore. That's like, oh yeah, this is the vibration. And actually it turns into like excitement. Like, oh, this is vibrations. Oh my God, oh my God, I'm so, I'm so close. And then of course, if you're too excited, that usually uh, destroys <laughs> the vibrations. So then you fail. So you, you know, so you need to keep yourself calm when you get vibrations. But it's just important to understand that, you know, it's something that you need, you need to, it's a process of something that you need to inv investigate and get comfortable with. And the more you understand it, the more you are getting comfortable with it and the more you see that, hey, this is fine. 